going on guys? Merrick here back with another Dragon Ball Super video. The 2019 National Championships are now over. Everybody can just stop the stress and relax. Take a break from the competitive meta. And, and what better way to do that than with a more casual fun deck? This is a deck that I've been working on for quite a while. I finally got around to getting some of the cards for it. Uh, getting the time to practice with it. And it works out pretty well. Initially, the deck seems pretty controversial, but bear with me and it'll make sense in due time. Uh, first up, we're starting with one of my favorite leaders, good old Set 2 Union Force Vegito. Uh, he makes all of your Goku and Vegito cards red. Of course, this only applies to Goku and Vegeta, not GT or BR or any other designation. Uh, when he attacks, you can place a card from the top of the deck in the drop area. If it's red, he gains an additional 5,000 power. It's an okay ability, but it's not really one that you need to use for this deck. On the Awakened side, we have Fusion Warrior Super Saiyan Vegito. Has the same permanent that makes all your Goku and Vegetas red, blue, and green. And his auto says when he attacks, you draw a card. If there's 10 or more Goku and Vegeta in your drop, he gains plus 5,000 at Double Strike. Chances are you're probably not going to have that happen. It's a, it's a neat ability that might come into play against some slower decks, but... This deck is supposed to be pretty fast, so you shouldn't end up having uh, to be able to use that ability too often. First up, we have our ideal turn one play. It's going to be Bobbity, Overseer of Destruction. I know this is going to come off as a really weird choice, so again, bear with me on this one. He's a one cost, 1,000. He's got Barrier. Uh, you can only have one of him in play, and he reduces the cost of all your Agent of Destruction cards by one. Which makes it a lot easier to play our second card of the deck, which is Vegeta, Agent of Destruction. He's a pretty powerful card when you combine it with that uh, Bobby card, because he, instead of being a 3-drop, he becomes a 2-drop for double red. His auto lets you KO a battle card 25,000 power or less when he comes into play. And his activate main is a pretty cool ability. For one blue and one other, if your leader is red, then you get to he gains plus 10,000 power, double strike, and dual attack. So, 30,000 Double Strike that attacks twice is insanely powerful, especially for turn 2. And because all of your energy should ideally be Vegeta's, um, you're going to have a blue and another energy because your leader makes him blue. So, it makes it really easy to take advantage of Vegeta's activate main ability. Then up next, we have 4 Vegeta Royal Prince. This came out of the King Vegeta deck. He's a 2 cost, 10,000. Activate main lets you choose a card in your life. He gains plus 5,000 power and critical for the turn. And that just kind of, it adds some crit pressure to the deck. It also gives you a way to self-awaken. Then up next we have 4 Vegeta Unyielding Temperament. He's a 3 cost, 15,000 with critical. He also has this really unique auto that says when he's KO'd or placed in the drop area from the battle area by an opponent's skill, you can choose one of your red battle cards with an original energy cost of 2 or less in your hand and play it, negating the skill for the turn. So that's kind of where that's kind of where the Vegeta Royal Prince comes into play, is he is a 2 cost, his ability doesn't have to be on play, so you don't really care about negating his abilities for the turn because this Vegeta is going to be KO'd on your opponent's turn, and then Vegeta Royal Prince will come out, and he can become, he's basically another 15,000 crit, that replaces this Vegeta for free. So it's a really cool little interaction that it keeps up the tempo of your deck w without having to force you to use more energy to play him. Then because this deck is so Majin Vegeta centric, we run three Glory Obsessed Prince of Destruction Vegeta. This is one of my favorites from the original championship. He's a three cost 15,000. That he says if your leader card is red, he can attack battle cards in active mode. And once per turn, when he attacks a battle card, you can switch him to active mode. He gains 10,000 power for the turn. So he's a 25,000 on the first hit, 15 on the second hit, and he can attack twice, and he can attack active battle cards. That is insanely powerful for a 3-drop, in my personal opinion. Then, if none of those Vegetas work for you, if none of those really have what it takes to be the finisher in your deck... Then we also run 4 at all costs Vegeta, because this is one of the most powerful Vegeta cards in the game. He's a 4 cost 20,000. Uh, when you play him, you draw a card, switch an energy to active mode, and then his activate main says you choose 2 cards in your life, add them to your end. He gains 3,000 power for each energy if you have 5 or more, and then he lets you KO a battle card, in game triple strike. So, 35,000 triple strike coming at you, that's a lot of power. And this is ideal for a finisher, but... Uh, I feel like the Agent of Destruction Vegeta is also an ideal finisher 
30,000 double strike dual attack is still pretty fucking powerful as well. Then because no deck is complete without your super combos, we run four Masaroshi Martial Expert. We run the Martial Expert because, one, the additional 10,000 without having to use his ability, uh, but also because sparking is just easier, especially with this deck, and it'll make a lot more sense why we have to run this particular leader with this deck as well. Now, if having one set of super combos isn't enough, we also run four Trunks Deluge of Power. Uh, basically, he gives an additional 5,000 power in addition to his regular... 5,000 combo power, making him a 10,000 combo for red battle cards. That's whether you're attacking with it or if your opponent's attacking. So it's essentially another playset of super combos without a that extra draw. Then if 8 wasn't enough, we also run for Sun Goten Delusia Power. This one is the same exact card except for green, but since you're running the Vegito leader, all your Vegitas are red, green, and blue. Now we don't play the blue one, uh, the shoe, and here's, here's the reason why. Space for one, but the reason we run the red and the green are because the red is just energy, period, because if, if you need to charge it, it's going to be red for your extra cards. I go with the green because he's a Saiyan, and in case you want to do anything with Saiyans, then, like, say, for example, you wanted to run Planet Vegeta or whatever, there's just, there's no reason to run Shu over the Goten. Then we've got our negate. My personal favorite red negate is after image technique. Uh, it doesn't negate the attack, but it does give your leader or battle card plus 40,000 power and reduces the attacking card by 10,000 power. So that's a 50,000 power difference. And yeah, if you have five or more cards in your drop, you can choose a card from your life and add it to your hand instead of paying the energy cost. So really super powerful, really strong counterplay for just any red deck in general. Now this is where I feel like the deck really keeps up its tempo and really keeps up its uh, its ability to stay aggro. We run four familial bonds. It's a red activate main that lets you choose a red Saiyan with an energy cost of three or less and 15,000 power or less and play it from your drop area. And then you can add two Dragon Balls from your deck to your hand. This is a really great card because there are several targets in the deck for you to choose from. With a total of 12 viable uh, Red Saiyan battle cards, you can choose Vegeta, the Royal Prince, Vegeta, Unyielding Temperament, or Glory Obsessed, Prince of Destruction, Vegeta. All three of these fit the criteria of being three th cost or less and 15,000 power or less. Unfortunately, Agent of Destruction, Vegeta is 20,000, not really much way we can get around that. But still, being able to bring any of those back for one energy less is, is just, it's a really solid play to be able to keep up your energy and keep up your tempo. Now, ideally, this is probably not the best route of play, but since the Familial Bonds card allows you to add two Dragon Balls from your deck to your hand, we run seven Dragon Balls. This is not a Wish Leader. This is not a Wish deck. I am aware of all of this, so please do not hate on me. But think about it for just a second here. If you have a card that is going to play you a battle card from your drop area and add two Dragon Balls to hand, why wouldn't you? Let's follow, because if you follow the train of thought, you play this. You play Familial Bonds, you bring Prince of Destruction back from the drop. He's now in play. That's replaced itself. You add two Dragon Balls to your hand. Forget about the others. You add two Dragon Balls to your hand. That's a plus two. You just plus two'd for nothing. And then you can play these to draw two other cards. And it also gives you cards in your drop area for, um, for your, to trigger your sparking. Now, tell me that's a bad idea. It may not be the best idea, and it may not be a strong competitive idea. But it's pretty solid in my mind for you to get a free plus two while just bringing back your battle cards to continue to wail on your opponent. Like, I just, I cannot see any fault with that, with that idea. Now, as far as side deck option goes, there's a lot of options you could run with this just because this is essentially always a tri-color deck or a quad color deck if you ran any yellow Vegetas. Um, one of my personal favorites is Super Saiyan Vegeta, exploding with power. Uh, when you play him, you KO all of your opponent's one-drops. Uh, he is Vegeta BR, though, so if you can't charge him, 
and expect him to count as all the colored energies. If your opponent is playing a deck that runs field cards, then Tactical Victory Vegeta is a great card because when he comes into play, you choose a field card and put it in the drop area. There's a lot of field card-centric stuff coming out in the next set, so with the exception of uh, Dr. Wheelow, you can take those field cards and just stick them right in the drop area. Now, if you did want to run Vegeta, if you did want to run yellow cards and you needed a good Vegeta target, uh, I would suggest Saiyan Bloodline Vegeta. Two costs, 15k. When he attacks, you can look at up to two cards and add a blue or yellow Saiyan to your hand. This is also a target for not only uh, familial bonds, but also a target for, for Vegeta Unyielding Temperament. Because he's a two drop and he would be red, so you could play him uh, from your hand as well and it would keep up kind of that aggressive tempo. Uh, if your opponent was playing a deck that swarms the field a lot and you wanted to get a lot of cor a lot of cards off the board uh, relatively quickly, then you could play Vegeta Penitent Martyr. Uh, he's a three cost, 20,000. Uh, at the end of your turn, you put him in the drop area and you get to return all of your opponent's battle cards back to their hand. So, while it doesn't get rid of the problem, it does remove them off the board and it forces your opponent to have to completely start their strategy over from square one. If you wanted more combo power and just wanted to give yourself a little bit more board presence, you could also run classic double shot Super Saiyan 2 Vegeta. Always a great card for this deck because, again, he's a Vegeta, so he can be any of the colors you need him to be. If you needed extra combo power, if you wanted that extra protection and 12 super combos wasn't enough, you could run four of the Shu Delusia power. If you needed more than that, say you just wanted to focus on a few of the battle cards and you didn't want to worry about, like, the, the bigger high cost ones, then you could run four Kaba's Awakening too. Uh, this card also works on protecting your leader and gives any of your red cards an additional 6,000 power. So your opponent's going to have to combo 10,000 needlessly just for your one card. If your opponent's playing a little bit more of an aggressive deck, you need that extra negate, but also need some board removal, then there's also Is That All You've Got, which is a great counterattack that lets you choose two of your opponent's battle cards and give them minus 15,000 power. You have to discard a card to activate the ability, but still, it's a great way to remove your opponent's board presence. If instead of doing that, you want to boost your own defenses, then you could also run Unending Awakening, which is basically a Sensu Bean for your red leader, because if your leader's red Saiyan, it gives you an additional 5,000 power for the turn and negates the attack. So that's a pretty solid defense card as well. Then lastly, you could run Denial of Hope, which is a counterplay that says that if your opponent plays a card 20,000 power or less, you put it in the drop area instead of putting it into play. There are a lot of solid options for a deck like this, especially for this Vegito leader, and that's why almost every set I find myself coming back to this leader, because there's so many options. We always get new Goku and Vegito cards, and it's just, it's, it's just so fun to be able to mix and match stuff like that. And to come up with just stupid strategies like this, this is the kind of stuff that I enjoy. Sure, being competitive is fun, but at the same time, I just like to rebuild and come up with new ideas. And when I can build stupid shit like this, I just always have a good time with it. Well, that's going to wrap this deck profile up. I know that we threw a lot of information at you guys uh, with all the different side deck options and uh, a little bit of more of a detailed description of how you can kind of play this deck. The Dragon Balls aren't necessary. That's seven slots. You could fit in some counterplay stuff if you really wanted to. But I built my version to be a lot more aggro. And to get two different, two more cards for free card advantage in your hand, I didn't see anything wrong with that at all. So, But let me know what you guys think of this deck in the comments down below. If you're a big Vegeta fan, I'm sure you'll love it. Uh, or if you're like me and you just want to find a way to play this Vegito leader every single time, Give it a try. See what you think of it. Uh, let me know if you come up with better combos for it or if you find any better way to improve the deck that I have built. With that, though, we're going to go ahead and get the freak out of here, and we'll see you guys in the next video.